Hey there, Soul Shines. It's Michelle here, and it is a creative expression video where we talk about works in progress, finished objects, life updates, anything else I feel like talking to you guys about. In a way, it's podcast style video via the knitting crochet world. Um, I live in Utah, and um, I have kids, I have grandkids, and I've been knitting for two and a half years, maybe. It hasn't been a long time, but I love knitting, and I've been crocheting for well over 40 years. Um, and so, I'm sorry, I'm not super high energy, especially today. I'm feeling heaviness in my heart, and we'll talk about that in the life updates. Before I continue, um, I want to let you know that there are chapter links in these videos always. So if you don't want to watch a part, you can see if there's more chapters, skip to it, whatever. Uh, there are pattern links. Um, this pattern is in um, all of my more recent videos um, as an automatic upload since it's always featured in my videos. I have not put Millie there, but if you guys want, a uh, pattern for Millie, you can. Uh, this gnome is one I um, kind of made up myself, so there's no pattern for that. Um, but there are patterns for anything that I mention that has pattern on. I try to let you guys know if there is a pattern. <sighs> See, chapter links, uh, pattern links. If I mention people, I usually tag them or at least put something so you can get to them. And, oh yeah, hey, hook the subscribe button, like the video, leave some yarn in the comments. Uh, in other words, leave me a comment. Let me know how you're doing. Hey, if you just want to put a yarn emoji in the comment, that works for me too. Um, I would love to know what's going on in your world right now. What are you working on? Uh, what f have you finished lately? And. Uh, what kind of collabs are you participating in or make-alongs of any kind, you know, are you participating in any make-alongs? I know there are so many different things happening on the YouTubes that you could be participating in. Um, a lot of people uh, have different kind of things going on, so um, I would love to know what you're participating in. Maybe it's something I'm interested in, maybe I'm not. Uh, let's talk about the mystery yarn challenge. Anybody else feeling kind of sad? Like, I totally respect it, and I totally am grateful for what she's done, and seriously understand. And I had a feeling um, the last couple of months that this was coming, that Lori the armchair chef is passing the torch if somebody's willing to take it. I think somebody is. I have a couple of ideas of who might be, but we'll see. It is a lot of work and she's done an amazing job. She just has her systems together and just make sure everybody's taken care of. And I think that's awesome. And there's one very tiny part of me that thinks I would love to take it over. And the other part of me is like, no. You can barely keep up with the stuff that you've got going. Why would you do that? So it is not me, guys. I am not one to take over. But I definitely want to participate. My favorite part, like this right here, this guy, he is the very first mystery yarn challenge that I participated in. It was my very first one. Um, I had been knitting gnomes at the time and so I was like oh that would be fun uh, I got different sized yarns that so I crocheted the bottom I knit his hat I think his nose is crocheted just kind of hooked some of the really thin yarn because the goal was to use what you got I think he was my first pretty sure he was the first challenge I don't know I loved it I loved making him Oops. Uh, I 
have made a lot of things. Sometimes I've found patterns, sometimes I've come up with them on my own. I made a lot of amigurumis partly because for the most part, because they're so small, they can go pretty fast. And it's really fun to have no clue what yarn you're getting and then just get to figure a way you know figure out something it it really helps my creativity and I just thrive on it um, I appreciate that she opened up the whips thing to allow for people to do that and I did use it um, the month that I finished this just to kind of give me an extra push it did not work for other things um, so I really do hope that somebody takes over the mystery yarn challenge in they're welcome to leave the whips thing going or whatever but that exchanging yarns it is so fun it is so creative so i do hope that somebody is doing that watch for it i have already told her i want to participate in august um i'm making sure that i have money in my shipping fund so that i can yeah um so that's the mystery yarn challenge. I'm a little bit sad. I totally understand. She's had an amazing run. It's been awesome. And she's ready to pass the torch. <sighs> what else? What else is going on? My granddaughter absolutely loves her present. I got to talk to her she has become quite a little lady she went through her first she just finished kindergarten so just that big step of going to school you could there's just such a big change in her and her ability to converse and you can tell that she's turning into a, a young lady and no longer in that preschool toddler phase and it's like so crazy cool um but she did love her presence um i I'm going to look through the pictures. I do not have permission to share her pictures, so um, I will, if there are any pictures that I can add that don't show her or don't show her directly, I will, um, or I mean, I will put them in the video, cause yeah. Let's talk about finished objects. Ah, I got one. I do, I do. Okay, so a friend of mine sent me the pattern for this and of course I'll include the pattern down below and I'll put the octopus pattern down below too um because I'll at least share a picture of the finished octopus um so that you can see that she was very excited about her game yes anyway so a friend sent a pattern for this there is one thing that I changed from the pattern and that's the eyes because she used safety eyes in hers but if you use safety eyes, you cannot put it in the microwave because the eyes will melt. And she wanted something that she could put into the microwave. So, um, yeah, I, I sewed them on so that everything is this 100% cotton. She also sent me this picture. I wanted a bowl that cozy that was that kind of cow. So this is what I came up with. I don't know. It's got little eyes there just because, you know, you got to have them. It's got the, the little hair thingy. It's got some horns. Um, so it's a bowl cozy that is for this kind of cow. Um, hopefully they work the way she wants them to. Um, I don't know. Their heads are floppy and I need to pull out a bowl and see if their heads even stand up, but I haven't. Anyway, if it, yeah, it's crazy, but I'm excited. I will be sending these out to her now that this video is done and that is finished up dead. Yay. So, um, I have found that I got super stuck because I had high pressure things going on. I was getting really angry at myself for not finishing the octopus. I really needed to finish that. And so, 
it became my focus. I was like, my daughter's, my granddaughter's birthday's coming up. I've got to finish it. So I finished that. It was my main thing I worked on. Occasionally I would work on um, the Vortex shawl. Oh, I do have it close by that I can show you when we talk about it. I don't know what I'm going to actually show you when we get to whips because I didn't bother to gather things. I just made sure I brought my finished object. Um, so in a while back when she asked me to do this, I was like, okay, I will do so much of this project and then do this project. And it was kind of in hopes that knowing that I had somebody counting on this, it would kind of push me to do it. Didn't work. But um, getting the octopus done, I was then I was like, okay, got to get this full coat Z done. So now this is done. I'm going to send it to her. She's really patient about it, and I appreciate it very much. Um, I have only made two of the seahorses that I was asked to make. Um, so I will be reaching out to her and just kind of having a chat with her about what to do about that um, because that's another one of those things. There's just, there's this extra pressure that comes and sometimes I can work around it and sometimes I can't. And the thing that makes me mad about the seahorses is they take like no time to make. They are so fast. I might actually have one here. I'll have to find those. So I have the yarn, but I don't have the seahorses in the bag there. But I can kind of show you. On the pattern. Well, let's see. I'll just hang it, hold them up, and then no, I will. I don't want to show the pattern. Anyway, so it's an applique. There you go. I have made a couple, um, and they're super cute. I tried. She wanted me to see if I could figure out how to make it facing the other way. I couldn't figure it out. I know that if I really worked hard, I probably could figure out a compatible one, but it was just like my brain was going, nope, I don't, I, this like is not making sense for me to turn it around. So, um, I do not have them going a different direction and I just need to talk to her because I really want to send her some seahorses. And that is like the last major concrete current pressure project. Um, I'm hoping that now that the cow cozies are done, it will give me the motivation I need to pull out some of the other things that I have going on. So I'm going to open up my um, notions page where I keep a list of all my running projects. Now I know not everybody can do this and that's fine you you know some people just sorry i'm wiggling the table some people just start their projects and they go and they pick up whatever they feel like working on and it's fine to a degree i can do that but also um some of my projects i kind of really want to make sure i'm moving forward on because i have been known to forget about a couple if they're just out of sight for a really long time. If they're not out of sight for a long time, I remember about them, but when they're a really long time. So I have multiple lists and um, there's a lot of flexibility. So uh, there's things like a bag that I started for things we're making Thursday. Um, it's kind of in timeout because I just don't even know what to do about it. I haven't decided. There is a cardigan I started for my grandson, and that's one of the things that I'm hoping that now that I've sent to my granddaughter her present, and I've got the cow cozies that I'm sending out hopefully today, um, now that I've got that stuff taken care of and a lot of pressure off of me, I'm hoping now I can work on the cardigans because I really do want to get both cardigans done before Christmas for my granddaughter and my grandson, and what do we have? August, September, October, November. In order to have time presents, they're probably not going to make it down here. I'm probably going to need 
to get them done in four months. So it's like a couple months a piece. It is totally doable, um, but I also don't want to get myself overwhelmed by it. And then I have so many things I want to make for myself. Um, I'm guessing I really need to get working on my alpaca hoodie scarf. Um, it's a scarf that I made fatter in the middle so that I could pull it up over my head. Because what I realized is I hate wearing hats. But I'm fine with wearing a scarf around my head. But so I was like, if I have a scarf that I wear around my head, but then it's a day that it's pretty cool. If it's wide enough in the middle, I can pull it up over my head and wear it like a scarf on those days that I need something. And so that's kind of my plan. Um, I did it with a provisional cast on, so I'm working both ends. And I'm just working out on both sides, and that's kind of fun. I got to probably go back and watch the last video we talked about it to figure out what I did last I think I don't know I think I'm just decreasing every other row every knit row or something I don't know I had to go look at watch the last video I made about it so I can remember what I'm doing on it um the vortex shell I have by me so I can show you it has not grown um, and it's at the point where it's going to take a lot for it to grow because, you know, it's so far around that even if I did three rounds, it's hard to tell it's grown any. Because um, what is that like? I don't even think th three rounds is probably, well, okay, let's talk two rounds. Two rounds looks like it's probably about a fourth of an inch. So four rounds is a half an inch. Um, and that would, so therefore actually, two rounds would be, make it the whole diameter be a half an inch longer. Four rounds would make the whole diameter an inch longer. But it's still, it's at that point where it's hard to see the growth. But um, it's still, it's growing, it, I still work on it. I really actually hope to finish this by December because I think this would be very fun to wear in Christmas time. Um, so I need to remember to put this either in the car and leave it in the car or take it with me because there's a few times I'm like, oh, I don't have a project with me and I'm just sitting here waiting. And it was because it was just too much effort to grab it. So I might just stick it in the car and leave it there for a while. Um, Oh, here's something I need to pull out and work on. Yeah, yeah. I haven't done anything more on this since I showed it the last week. And it's just sitting here and it's so close. All I have to do is so, uh, crochet the elastic in on both sides. And I'm already that far on one side of it. So, yeah, I just need to hurry and finish that. So, um... I'll try to work on that today. Get that done. And then of course this temperature socks I am keeping up on. I'm really curious about this week. Um, Salt Lake County has had some really high temperatures for Utah. Uh, and especially for this time of year. And compared to St. George though, we're chilling. St. George is very hot right now. Um, but Pleasant Grove hasn't gotten too too bad and that's where I live Utah County it hasn't gotten too hot I mean it's gotten hot and our van doesn't have air conditioning so when I take my son to work and he either has to be there at two three or four sometimes five it's very hot and there was a day this week where even having the wind from you know driving was just not helpful because the wind was hot like it didn't help cool down. It did help with stuffiness, but even that was barely, just the air in general felt stuffy. So I wish I had money to get everybody the little fans that, you know, like people put around their neck and wear. Like a lot of the Walmart workers are wearing those right now. And I kind of wish I had money for everybody to have those so that when we go in the van, we all have this little air conditioning thing going on, you know, little fan on our necks. I think that would really help. I do know that if I would have had to take my kids to their dads this week, I would have had to say, you know, I don't have air conditioning in the car. I can't. It's one thing for me to, and 
one or two people to drive around. We can have the front windows open. But when I have to have kids sitting in the back seat, I'm like, no. I know that it is very, very hot back there and no air back there, even with the vent things open. So, no. So I would have had to say no to that. Um, we've talked about the seahorses and the cow cozy, which I'm going to take a minute while I'm here and mark finish because I am so excited to have that done. Um, I started a skirt way back when and have done like nothing on it. And the other thing is, is that I had made these, their sewing project and I have done nothing more on them. Um, but I did get the cow cozies done, so I worked hard. That kind of covers all the things that are on my currently active list, if you will. So that's it right now. Um, I decided that I didn't want to participate in the bird of the month this month just because I have had such a hard time with my mojo, crojo, nitjo, all the joes. Um, and so since I've been having a hard time, I didn't want to commit to the bird of the month. I am hoping that I love August and that I have colors and that I can do work on August because that will be fun. I am also working on the mystery yarn challenge. I'm just hoping that it will bring things back into balance. Plus, guys, school. Let's talk about a life update. I'm just sitting here kind of going, how'd that happen? Today, I'm recording this on Saturday, July 13th. The two of my kids are going to be doing an online high school. And their courses open on August 12th. And then um, the high school, because um, one of my girls, or yeah, well, one of my girls, my other girl's 21, she's not in high school, but my, uh, my daughter is, goes over for theater and, uh, choir, and then she's taking, she has a mythology class and a psychology class, but I don't remember which semester they are, so I think mythology might be this semester, but she's going over there to do those classes, and that starts on August 15th. I just... It boggles my mind that we're like this. August, July and August are the two hottest months in the year here in Utah. Going back to school in the middle of August means these kids are going back to school in the middle of the heat. The heat doesn't start to even begin to die down until the end of August and then things start to kind of cool down in September. So they're going to school in the middle of the heat of middle of August. Um, it's ridiculous in my opinion. Then they get out, um, they finish the week before Memorial Day. So, um, I feel like they don't actually get Memorial Day because now they're out of school. So it's all out of there. Whereas when I went to school, we went back to school for at least a week after Memorial Day. But I prefer them doing that because the first couple of weeks of June are still pretty cool. So it doesn't really feel as much like summer as the rest. So if they would go back to going and starting later in August or even starting on Labor Day like they do in some states, um, I would prefer that. I like, I'm okay with them going into June a little bit um, just because the weather, I just, yeah. Anyway, so like in a month, my kids are going back to school. Just, just boggles my brain. <sighs> and summer feels so short. Maybe because it is, uh, takes so long before it gets warm, before they can really truly feel like summer. Um, so the first couple of weeks of summer vacation don't feel like summer yet. Um, and then they go back to school before it feels like summer's over. And maybe that's just my training, but that's how the weather feels to me. So I go by that. Um, so yeah, that's a life update. Um, so one of the life updates is the dog. Our dog is going to be 14 human years in 
on August 5th. Um, he is a half breed, part uh, poodle. We're not 100% sure about the other half. We were told he was a half Shih Tzu, but he is not. I have looked through pictures of the different kinds of poodle breeds, the mixed um, poodles, and I think it looks like a setter, maybe an Irish setter is the other half. Something along that line was the ones that actually look like him. Uh, and so anyway, he's half breed and we're really concerned about him. He's not really eating, he's having a hard time breathing. Um, he will still drink. He's very uh, slow, getting weak, of course, he's not eating. Um, I literally don't have a way to take him to the vet, and that makes me sad. I know he's old, and I know he's probably got some major health problems, and I hate watching him suffer. As much as it would be really sad and we'd mourn the loss of him, I kind of wish if he's, if this is like, if he's on his last leg and he's going to be dying soon, I just wish he could go right now and not suffer because it's so hard. And I don't want to face the grief. I don't want my son who loves him so much to face the grief. But at the same time, him being in so much uh, struggle is really hard too. So uh, that's why we're out with that. So <sighs> I'm not sure what to do. Um, I don't know. Everything else is just kind of happening. Life is just happening. I really just have nothing to report. We went up, uh, my daughter and I went through the canyon and visited a place, I think I talked about it last week. And that's actually made it even harder to be around because it was so nice to just have a break. I didn't feel the pressure of all the people. I didn't feel the pressure of just I don't know, there's just something so healing about nature and it felt so good to be there. And I just wish I could go there more frequently. My car won't let me. Um, so yeah, um still trying to figure out how to get my younger kids into jobs. My baby's going to be fifteen soon. That's crazy. My youngest daughter just turned seventeen, extra crazy. Um it's weird. My, my, one of my sons is going to be 20 in October. And then that leaves me with three teenagers. And that sounds weird because when my daughter was 19, my youngest turned 13 and I literally had five teenagers. I had five teenagers and a 29 year old. And now I have four teenagers for a few more months, a 21 year old and a 31 year old. And so in October, half of my kids will have made it all the way through the teens and I'll only have three teenagers, which sounds weird to me and kind of have a lot of mixed feels about them growing up. This doesn't feel like a great video. I am feeling, I don't know, I feel like heavy and lethargic today. Oh, excuse me, I'm feeling tired. I'm feeling stressed. I'm feeling super weird about money right now. I don't even know how to explain it. It's just a thing. Anyway, I'm sorry that this isn't like the most amazing video to watch. 
I have comparisonitis. Um, my, I don't know, I watch people on YouTube and they've got these just amazing personalities. Some of them don't share anything about their lives, which is fine. Some of them do share about their lives, which is fine. Um, but mostly it's just, there's just these such a vibrant personalities. They're so charismatic. And I'm not, and never have been, and probably never will be a charismatic person. Um, my nature is to be more conversational than charismatic. And then, so then I start comparing myself. In fact, I've been known to sit quietly in a room and just observe everybody um, for a very long time without interacting with anybody. Um, because that's kind of my personality. And so then I get on YouTube and I watch these like super charismatic people come in and I'm just like, I wish I could be them. And then in other times I'm like, no, I'm glad to be me. I'm grateful to be me. People feel safe in talking to me, which then allows me to help guide them through healing questions and stuff as I am doing the stuff that I do, so. Yeah. Anyway, that's all. That's all. I'm done. I'm done rambling. I promise. Remember to let your light shine through your creations, or whatever they be. Silly cow cozies, or blankets, or anything and everything. Remember to let your light shine, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!